Treasure Coast Connector. Connecting residents and businesses of the Treasure Coast. And here's your host, Ellen Contreras. Well, welcome to Treasure Coast Connector. I'm your host, Ellen Contreras of the Ferris Group, one of our sponsors. To learn all about them, check out their website at www.ferrisgroup.com. That's P-H-A-R-U-S group.com or call them directly at 772-223-3344. Treasure Coast Connector is a show that puts the spotlight on local business owners so we can learn why they started their business and what makes their products and services so unique and special. Today, we're going to be talking about avoiding the feeling of shoulda, coulda, woulda with regard to legal matters so we can stay ahead of the game and be well prepared. And joining me today again is Steve Lulich of Lulich Attorneys and Consultants, and they're located in Sebastian and Vero Beach. So welcome, Steve. It's wonderful to have you back again. Thank you. It's great to be back. Yes. So I know I asked this of you the last time, but we're going to have some new people watching and listening. So please tell everyone why you wanted to be an attorney and what made you want to start your own practice as opposed to working for someone else. Well, that's a bit of a story. Uh, I would say uh, from when I was very young, my father told me that uh, I argued way too much, so I should be an attorney. (laughs) Other than that, um, I was a real estate broker and builder uh, as the first part of my career. Mm -hmm. And I used to go to closings uh, provided by attorneys, and uh, they just couldn't get the closing statement down. Okay, and I says, well, you know what? As As a real estate broker, I was doing better than them as an attorney. And I says, you know, I think this is the place for me. Mm -hmm. And... um, and I always like solving problems, and and really the, they the practice of law. The reason why they call it a practice is because every every case is kind of unique. Mm-hmm. So you have to really get into the law, find out what the situation is, look at the facts, see what the case law is, and figure out how you can guide a person. Mm-hmm. And so that that's really why I've gotten into it because I I like being with people and I like solving problems. Well, very nice. That's wonderful. So speaking about solving problems, the the phrase, you don't know what you don't know. Okay. So that is something that people should own up to because it'll keep them out of a lot of trouble when they learn about things. And so the other thing is, is unfortunately, we're all going to pass away someday. And what we have to do is, is prepare for that eventuality. So if you, um, you know, need to prepare, it's always better to get the help and the advice of an estate planning attorney, which you are. That's one of your areas of, of specialty. And I think it's the biggest gift that you can give to your family, to your loved ones. So talk about that of what you advise people to do to prepare themselves, their estate, and their family for the eventual. And, and, and I'd love to do that, but first I oh, want to talk a little yes. bit about what you said uh, with regard to what you know or what you don't know. Yeah. Okay. And so um, in most legal situations, when you have to answer under oath, and if there's something that uh, you're going to answer, you can give an answer. Okay. Um, and it's always to the best of your knowledge. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because if it's something that you don't know. Yeah. How yeah. could you answer to, answer right. to it? Mm-hmm. So you are correct in that statement, okay? Um, but it, it, it's also a reflection upon my, what, when I went to college and I went to, then I went to law school after that. And, and, and really what higher education brings to you as an individual is a realization of how much you don't know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, when you're young, you think you know it all. <laughs> exactly. Okay. And the more you realize what's going on in life, the more you realize that there's a lot you don't know. And that's why we rely upon professionals or experts in different areas. Mm -hmm. Uh, So you don't necessarily go to a contractor, okay, and ask him a legal question. Right. And, you know, unless he is a contractor, Mm -hmm. okay. So uh, with regard to your question, uh, planning for your eventual demise, nobody likes to do that. Okay, that's and, true. and that's why 70% of Americans don't have a will. Okay, and when you ask them, 
Well, how come they say they just didn't get get around to it? Well, I think it's a little bit more than that. Yeah. I think it's nobody really wants to think about their demise. That is true. That's why I said it's a gift, though, because when my mom passed, all of her ducks were in a row. So we were able to go through the grieving process and we didn't have to worry about anything else and well, figure yeah. stuff out. And, and that's important. And and really, the, 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 the when you're older, you might have things set up for yourself mm -hmm. and your children already, or you might not, and it's good to do that. But surprisingly enough, uh, young people, because they feel invincible, mm -hmm. that they're never going to die because they don't have any aches and pains, yeah. and if they fall down, they roll and get up, and there's nothing, uh, yeah. and nothing happened to mm -hmm. them, you know? Yeah. Uh, but those... Married couples with children really are doing a disservice if they don't have a will because there's more than just leaving something to their kids. They mm -hmm. have to think about who's going to be the guardian, who's going to be the one to manage the money. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot more involved. And if they don't prepare for that, there could be chaos. There could be family members, other family members fighting about these issues. Mm -hmm. So if you really want to protect your children in that regard, you should do prior planning by having a will. Okay. And so... Uh, a will is is a document. You know, some people say, "Well, I don't have anything." Well, that that's really not entirely true, okay? Yeah. Because everybody has their body. Mm -hmm. So, what are you going to do with your body? Right. Okay. And who's going to take care of your body? Mm -hmm. Okay. That number one. Okay. And then most people have a car. They have phones. They have personal items. And then on and on. Mm -hmm. Okay. And sure. so you do have Houses, something. Yeah. And and and, and so you sh everybody should have a will. And. And we do a will almost uh, pro bono. It's $70, mm -hmm. okay? Very a simple nice. will. Of course, if it's a more com complex situation, That's we can do totally that. But most people yeah. need a simple will, okay? And they also need what's known as a power of attorney, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, why? What is a power of attorney? A power of attorney is where you give to another person the right to do everything in your place. Mm -hmm. So why would you want to do that? Well, what if you got in a car accident? What if you went into a coma? What if you got Alzheimer's? What if you got dementia? What if for some reason you were mentally or physically incompetent? You need to have somebody be able to take care of you. And you know, for $70, that's not a lot of money because if you don't have that, mm -hmm. you might have to get a guardianship and that can cost you four or $5,000. Oh, and that's a hard So why break. not spend $70 to protect yourself now? Right, and, and that power of attorney would only come into play if God forbid that person became incapacitated. Yes. So yeah. you don't have well, you to don't worry. you don't give it to them. You keep it with your yes. private papers in case mm -hmm. they need to find it. They can, you know. Yeah. And, and the third document that 90% uh, of my clients have, it's a will, a power of attorney, and a living will. And a living will is basically what people know as a do not resuscitate. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so that's, that happens if, for instance, if you're brain dead, okay, and, and as a result of getting in an accident, uh, they'll put you on life support, supporting equipment and you can stay on that. And if... If you're elderly, okay, you know, it might, the person who's there who's not uh, uh, brain dead, okay, mm -hmm. uh, it can be an emotional stress that could, could put them in, in yeah. harm's way uh, health-wise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so there would be a reason to disconnect. And if you do not have a living will, they will not disconnect you, period. Yeah. Okay. Uh, several years ago, there was a case in uh, Tampa, the Shriver case, where there was a woman who was brain dead mm -hmm. and, and, the, and the parents and, and the husband fought over it, yep. okay, for years, five, five, six years they fought over it. Finally, the governor got involved and, and she was able to be disconnected. But so that's what it'll take. So if you, if you really want to avoid the situation where you're, you're kept alive needlessly, mm -hmm. okay, you should have a living will. Wow. All right. Well, very good. You've given us a lot to consider. So I just want to look at the camera very quickly because I know that there's going to be people listening and watching to this, watching this. So if you want to connect with Steve Lulich, you can call the office at 772-589-5500. You can also get a lot more information on the website, which is www.lulich.com, L-U-L-I-C-H.com. So I just wanted to get that out yeah, there. Yeah, and that's fine. And if you go to the website, I also have a forms online mm -hmm. for will, a will oh, form. Oh, very nice. Okay, and so if, if you want to know what questions I will be asking you or if you want to send that form to me uh, so so we don't, you don't have to meet with me uh, mm -hmm. unless we're going to do it for the signing, which we have to do. Right. And there's certain formalities to signing a will. Mm -hmm. You have to have two witnesses and a notary. And some of these wills that are handwritten aren't good, okay? Mm -hmm. 
they're, yeah. they're void, okay? And if you have a will that's been typed and it's been signed properly, mm -hmm. you know, with two witnesses and a notary and, and, and certain formalities, mm -hmm. okay, and you hand write on your will, yeah. okay, you've just voided it. So some people do that. They they have a will and then they change their mind. They say, "Oh, I'll just go sign it and initial it." Well, you just voided your will. Oh, okay. So if that yeah, if you're in that know. situation, please uh, get your will redone. See, this is why this show is so important because I did not know that. So thank you, at least for teaching me something. And I know you've taught so many other people a lot. Well, just, that's why just I that. come to you when I want to know anything about radio. Oh, well, that's wonderful. <laughs> and of course, Cindy and Donna as well. Cindy is uh, our producer behind the scenes, kind of. She's always on the radio, too. Anyway, so I digress. So the shoulda, coulda, woulda is going to continue. Now we're going to talk about the flip side. Somebody has already passed. Um, they did not do any pre-planning. There's no will. There's the, they have an estate. Maybe it's moderate. Maybe it's you know quite a large estate, and they're gone. The family is devastated. They're grieving, and now they have just a huge mountain of trouble. What do you tell people? H how do you advise them? Well, I. I'll, I'll talk about common mistakes first, mm -hmm. okay? Actually, what we'll do, we're going to talk about that for one minute, and then we're going to have to take a break. But So we'll, okay. we'll, we'll just do a quick one-minute intro into this, very, and then we'll circle back. Yeah, very okay. quickly, uh, if, if somebody passes away in the family, okay, and you think you're in charge, okay, do not call up the uh, homeowner's insurance, okay, and tell them that they passed away, because they will cancel it, and then there'll be no insurance on the house. So please do not do that, okay? Oh. Uh, also, uh, if it's where everything's owned, owned jointly, mm -hmm. okay, husband and wife own everything jointly, accounts and all of that, okay, do not change all the accounts and take your spouse's name off. At least leave one account with their name on it because if you get a refund check or you get some check that is written out to your spouse uh. and you have no place to deposit it, you will have to do a probate, okay? And probate starts around fifteen, eighteen hundred dollars and up. And so if that check is for four or five hundred dollars, you just lost four or five hundred dollars. Wow. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a very quick break. We have a lot more wonderful things to talk about that are going to avoid a lot of problems for us all. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with the Treasure Coast Connector. It's time to call Easy Brew Coffee and Bottled Water Service and learn just how much you can save and how convenient it is to have your coffee and bottled water delivered right to your home or office. In addition to water coolers, Easy Brew offers individual bottles of water in 8 or 16 ounce bottles. No more lugging it home or dragging it into the office. Serving the Treasure Coast for over two decades, two letters, one simple name. Easy for Easy Brew. Visit e-zbrew.com or call 800-792-3285. Easy Brew. Blue Dolphin Pools strives to provide quality service with a well-trained staff in the field and in the office. They want you to know that your pool or spa investment means much more to them than just another account. They believe you have entrusted them with your investment and they'll do their best to see that it stays in top condition. Blue Dolphin Pool has been in business over 35 years, setting them apart from the competition. Residential or commercial, Blue Dolphin will keep you in the swim. 567-5853. Hi, I'm Derek Ogden from Word of Mouth Computers and Electronics. Since 2009, my team and I have been providing South Florida and the Treasure Coast with the highest level of service in the technology field. Computers, networks, surveillance systems, web services, Wi-Fi systems, anything you need technology related, we're your guys. Small business technology and consulting is my passion. Whether your business has one computer or a hundred computers, I will come to your office and give you a custom technology evaluation report and you won't owe me a dime for it. That's right, a free in-office technology consult, but only for a limited time. For your home or business, all you need is one number for all your technology needs. Call me right now before time runs out at 888-966-7228. Remember, there's no obligation. That number again is 888-966-7228. And ask for me, Derek. A member of the iTex trading community. Your iTex dollars are welcome.
Well, welcome back to Treasure Coast Connector. I'm your host, Ellen Contreras of the Ferris Group, one of our sponsors. And we've actually been having a very interesting conversation about legal issues and how best to prepare yourself so you don't find yourself in a shoulda, coulda, woulda situation. So we're going to go back to the conversation we were having about if somebody doesn't prepare for their passing and get their affairs and their estate in order, and now the family, the grieving family, is left behind to figure stuff out, you you were sharing some pretty good information. So continue scaring us, please. Well, uh, you know, I, I I would like to scare you. No, I would not <laughs> no. like to scare you. Okay. In fact, let me let me uh, make you assure that mm -hmm. if you die without a will, your property will go somewhere. Yes. Okay. Uh, there are a few situations where it would go to the state, but that would mean where they couldn't find a living relative mm -hmm. at all. Okay. okay. So there is a state statute that deals with people who, who die intestate, and that okay. means without a will. Yeah. Okay. And it usually goes, if you have a spouse or children, it goes to them in certain proportions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if not, it goes to your brother and sisters. If not, it goes up to your parents. If not to your parents, then it, it goes to... Um, down to their sisters and brothers and mm -hmm. then down to the nephews and nieces. So if you have absolutely no relatives, then it'll go to the state. Mm -hmm. But the point here is to have a will so you can control exactly where your assets mm -hmm. go. Okay. So even though there's, there's some sort of umbrella provided by the state. Okay. Uh, you know, the fear that it's all going to go to the state um, in, yeah, in, no. in, in very seldom does that happen. But you want it to go where you want it to go, okay? Mm -hmm. And and so, you know, you might have uh, percentages that you want to go to different people, mm -hmm. okay? A lot of times it's not good to leave, you know, you could have some specific bequeaths, you know, mm -hmm. like my jewelry yeah. or my dishes or my guns, mm -hmm. okay, my fishing gear, mm -hmm. okay? Different stuff like that you might want to leave to people who would use it, yeah. okay? Uh, you know, but in general, other than those little things like that, it's better to leave in percentages instead of saying, well, this much money to this one and this much money to this one and the house to this one. And the reason for that yeah. is you don't know what you're going to end up with in the end. That was going to so, be something I yeah. asked. And yes. so if you leave a percentage to everybody, mm -hmm. everybody's going to get a little bit. Very good. Very good. So again, so more food for thought. If you're feeling like I've got to do something about this, then please don't hesitate to reach out to Steve Lulich at 772-589-5500 and visit their website for a lot of information, www.lulich.com, L-U-L-I-C-H.com. You know, you're really good at this. And if you keep it up, you're yeah. going to remember my phone number. Yes. <laughs> I hope I got it right. Don't there tell you that. Go. No. <laughs> I do have to write it down just in case I go blank. Um, so now we, we, we talked a little bit about, I mean, there's so much more to talk about estate planning, but there's other areas in which you practice. Yes. And so... You know, yes, while we try to pre-plan things, um, personal injury is an area of practice for you. And nobody wants to get into an accident and nobody plans on getting into an accident. But there's that moment when something happens, whether it's a car accident, somebody's injured at work or maybe in a retail environment. And then they're like, what do I do? So when an accident occurs... Okay, well, what do we if, do? if you need a brochure on this, you just contact me um, <laughs> uh, through yeah. my email on my mm -hmm. website or my phone yeah. number, and we can send you a pamphlet that you can put in your car. Mm -hmm. So if you get an nice. auto accident, you know exactly what to do at the okay. scene. But generally speaking, okay, uh, you want to uh, make sure first thing that you get medical treatment. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you're at the scene, get the information from the police officer yeah. or the other person or the insurance companies. And if there's a police officer, he'll get all of that for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, if you're uh, seriously injured, they'll take you by ambulance. Okay. Uh, one of the problems with auto insurance is auto insurance, you pay, you, you when you get auto insurance, you get... $10,000 worth of personal injury protection, mm -hmm. okay? And that's medical insurance that they provide that you don't have to pay back to anybody. Okay. That's to take care of you if you're injured, okay? Now, if you go to certain hospitals, okay, and you're not seriously injured, 
but you say, oh, my back hurts or my neck hurts. Yeah. Well, they might spend the whole $10,000 right there and then. Wow. Okay. So I suggest that you, you see a medical doctor, mm -hmm. okay, and if you need further treatment. Now, if you're bleeding and something's broke, you please, you go do, don't take hospital. a chance, go to a hospital. I'm not a doctor. They yeah. know best. But a doctor, a good doctor, uh, a medical doctor. Or an urgent care, right? An yeah, urgent med, care? I would, yeah, but medical doctor's real important, okay, and the reason why is if, if you don't go to the doctor, okay, that day or the day after, okay, um, and have from a medical doctor and not some other type of doctor, okay, mm -hmm. uh, uh, seeing them be, uh, and they describe it that they, you had to go there because you had an injury, mm -hmm. your $10,000 worth of protection in most policies will be limited to $2,500, especially if you don't go in the first two weeks. Oh. They can automatically, so that's why it's so very important because sometimes 30 days later, all of a sudden you get a pain and you ha you end up having a herniated disc, okay, and you didn't have the doctor check you out. Oh, wow. Okay, so very, very important to protect yourself, protect the coverage that you have, mm -hmm. okay, and go to a doctor as soon as possible, okay? Yeah. And, and, and that's, that's really very, very important, mm -hmm. okay? Um, in addition to that, you know, if, if you can, you know, if there's witnesses, the police usually take down the witnesses' mm -hmm. names and numbers, but uh, make sure you take pictures of, of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Make sure you uh, take pictures of the license plate so we can identify the vehicle. Okay. Okay. The, the pictures have to be associated with a certain vehicle, and that's yep. what identifies the vehicle. Mm -hmm. And and so those are the basic things. Doctor first, okay, um, and, and then see an attorney. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and the reason why I say see an attorney and, and you know, I'd like you to see me. Okay. However, <laughs> see any attorney better right. than no attorney. Right. Okay. Yeah. And the reason for that is the insurance companies, uh, God love them. We have plenty of them and plenty of my friends are in the insurance businesses, mm -hmm. but the insurance companies work for the underwriters. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the underwriters have two philosophies. Number one, pay nothing. Mm -hmm. Number two, if you have to pay, Pay as little as you can. Right. Okay. And so the only one that's going to be in your court, mm -hmm. the only one that's going to protect you is an attorney. And what's nice about it is the attorney does not typically in Florida get a fee unless he gets an award, a settlement, mm -hmm. or goes to court and gets money for you. Okay. It's called a contingency fee. Mm -hmm. So in other words, you don't have to go to an attorney and worry about, do I have to give him any money up front? Right. Okay, he's hired. He gets okay. some money for you. Mm -hmm. He gets a piece of it, and so uh, that's convenient. Okay, for the person that's not running around with a lot of money for a retainer. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. No. But very, very true. So we are almost out of time, and I can't believe how fast this show goes. Honestly. So, but okay. I, I do, I do want to answer yes, one question you had told yes. me that somebody called in, okay, yes, and they but, had a question. But we literally are going to run out of time. So very, very quickly, the question is that they slipped and they fell at work. They, they felt like they were okay, but then a couple of days later, they had a shooting pain running down their leg. And they, the boss thought they were making it up. Okay, it doesn't make a difference if he made it, if he thinks it's making it up. He has a duty and obligation to report it to his uh, to his workman comp insurance. Okay, mm -hmm. and in the office, he also has an obligation to post a sign with a broken arm on it. Okay, if you look at this sign, the insurance company's phone numbers are on it. Mm -hmm. And if he hasn't done that, then you can suggest to him that you're gonna that he should report this to OSHA. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's Occupational Safety and Health Administration. And if he doesn't, you can at one eight hundred three two one six seven four two. Very good. Well, thank you very much for that, and thank you for being on the show again. You're going to be on the show again next month, which is wonderful. So we're going to have a lot more to talk about. Thank you for being on the show, and, and thank you, and for all you listeners, have a great day. Yes, and to call them seven seven two five eight nine fifty five hundred lulich dot com l u l i c h dot com. I'm Ellen Contreras, your host at Treasure Coast Connector. Ferris Group is one of the sponsors. You can call them directly seven seven two 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 three 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 four four or visit their website ferrisgroup.com p h a r u s group.com and i hope everyone has a wonderful and productive week and thank you again steve <laughs>